Back in mid to late 2019, a meme came to be. Islam is right about women, or IIRAW. It's a fairly straightforward creation, with the original versions both weighing in as 800 by 1200 images. The first used Tahoma Bold font had a size of 147. The second, more ink-friendly image used Source Code Pro at a size of 120, as shown by screenshots of the original XCF files. While the world will never know for sure who exactly the absolute madman it was that came up with this catchphrase, I'm sure whoever it was probably had a good laugh, but then later grew annoyed by the fact that years later, some of the people still discussing this meme have yet to really get it. There are various misconceptions, such as people who think Ira is hate speech, that it's somehow intended to make fun of women or Islam or both, or that it's some weird incel thing, or that it's fascist propaganda or some form of dog whistle. All of these misconceptions are completely false. It's not supposed to be used to spread hate against anyone. And a lot of people who look into it actually find themselves gaining an increased respect for Islam, if anything. Rather, the purpose of the meme is a simple, straightforward way to expose a critical reasoning flaw in something known as utopian thinking. You might have heard of this term before, but from what I have seen, the coverage of it has much to be improved upon. Most people with a decent head on their shoulders notice that ERA is an intentional catch-22, when put up against modern political correctness at least. But not everyone immediately tied it to being a critical evaluation of utopian thinking, and how it relates to concepts that interestingly enough have little to do with Islam or women. And that is what this video will be illuminating. Utopian thinking is characterized as a method of thought that is grounded in a fantasy of perfect social ideas, rather than being grounded in some kind of objective reality. A utopian thinker will generally believe in cultural relativism, or the idea that right and wrong are subject to the culture, because admitting that someone could be wrong is offensive, and of course, we can't have offensive things in our utopia now, can we? And then they will ignore logical contradictions in their vision to craft what they believe to be an ideal world. Have your everyone's right cake, and eat it too. And finally, compare competing ideologies with said contradictory-filled utopian vision, rather than a realistic, obtainable goal. It's very similar to how a cult leader might convince his followers that drinking the Kool-Aid will whisk them all away to a magical paradise for all eternity. It sounds great until of course you consider the fact that the Kool-Aid is a deadly poison and there is zero evidence of said promised paradise. So if the cult leader is called out on this nonsense, they of course must deflect from the facts and straw man by accusing the person who called them out of attacking the concept of paradise rather than attacking the problem of the poison. The reality of the Kool-Aid being a death potion must be avoided by the cult leader at all costs in order to keep up their illusion. If only there was a simple way to throw a wrench in this kind of tactic. That's where Islam is right about women comes in. First, let's look at what Muslims actually say about women. The majority of Muslims believe that a wife should obey her husband. Muslims generally frown on divorce, but disagree on whether it should be allowed or not. Depending on where you go in the world, the choice to wear a veil may or may not be seen as a woman's right. And Muslims who agree with Sharia law generally take the much more conservative positions. You can also read the Quran to 223, 4, 11, 4, 15, or if you really want to take it in context, the entirety of chapter 4 can be read at Quran.com. To put it simply, the Islamic view of women is somewhat similar to that of 1950s conservative Western ideals. Not as harsh as some people make it out to be, but also not anywhere near compatible with far-left intersectional feminism or just intersectionality in general. So when faced in the question, is Islam right about women, a reasonable cultural conservative might think, hmm, yes, the Islamic view of women is not too different from my own. Perhaps Islam is right about women. While a reasonable cultural liberal might think, hmm, no, I do not believe the Islamic view is compatible with my modern Western standards. Islam is not right about women. Or perhaps a reasonable radical centrist might say, hmm, Islam has some good ideas I agree with, but some I have misgivings about. Now, which of these three it takes is correct? Who cares? It doesn't matter. The point is that reasonable people are able to evaluate the question and answer it honestly, or at the very least acknowledge the contradictory nature of the question and politely decline to comment. People who are not utopian thinkers understand that different cultural and religious values are not always logically compatible with each other. They often have conflicting ideas of success and different ethical standards. For instance, some religions believe that all followers of other religions shall receive a form of divine punishment for their non-belief. So it's obvious to any rational person that not everyone can be correct. Someone has to be incorrect. But to admit this goes against the politically correct utopia. 
So when the Islam is right about women question is posed to an indoctrinated member of the cult of woke, who probably subscribes to the utopian thinking of intersectionality with cultural relativism, they are unable to provide any kind of reasonable answer, nor are they able to honestly acknowledge the contradiction that the question binds them in. This type of person usually absolutely despises traditional gender roles, viewing them as patriarchal and oppressive. But they also want to believe that the Islamic view has come somehow compatible with this ideal progressive utopia. And yet, many still delude themselves into the idea that all belief systems are fundamentally compatible and should result in some form of equal outcome, or the equity policy as I discussed in my previous video. The phrase, Islam is right about women, is thus deeply triggering to them, because they want to believe that somehow both the negative and positive positions of the statement are simultaneously somehow correct. They want to have their cultural differences cake and eat it too. So when faced with ideas stemming from different backgrounds, that are in obvious conflict, they are forced to perform mental gymnastics and claim that these conflicting ideas are somehow totally the same in order to maintain their delusional beliefs. This can come in the form of backpedaling on their intersectional identity politics, or attempting to obscure and misrepresent Islamic beliefs based on some kind of cherry-picked anecdotal experience with Islam, rather than an honest look that's based on the polling data I went over earlier. This is effectively where the ERA meme is aimed at. It is not about making fun of women. It is not about making fun of Islam. It is not some weird incel or fascist thing or equivalent. It is a statement simply meant to expose members of the cult of woke for the irrational and hypocritical lot that they are. As when conflicted with the statement, the mind of the utopian thinker generally tends to experience some kind of stack overflow, spurging out and falsely accusing the person asking the question of being some kind of super bigot mega fascist. How dare you point out the fact that eating my cake means I no longer have my cake in front of me. Clearly, you must be a terrible person for pointing out the facts. Now, some might be wondering, that's all well and good, but doesn't it only refute the specific type of utopian thinking in reference to Islamic values not conflating well with woke intersectional concepts of gender? After all, there's nothing inherently wrong with thinking about and aiming for a better world as long as you make sure not to contradict yourself, right? Sure, nothing wrong with that. This video isn't saying you can't try to think of how to improve things. The problem is that these days, too many people just aren't very good at it. So let's look at some other examples. One common form of contradictory utopian thinking would of course be socialists trying to convince you that the free market is evil, and their version of socialist utopia experiment number 895C will totally work this time. Of course, they can't actually compare what socialism usually results into capitalism, because that's an argument that they lose every time they try, so instead, they compare the free market to their utopian ideal of what a communist paradise ought to be. One particular video by Second Thought serves as a perfect example of this kind of dishonest reasoning. His video, A Future Beyond Capitalism, Socialism Explained, presents a dystopian list of the worst problems of capitalism you can think of, and some of the criticisms being valid while others not so much. He displays zero understanding of what actually causes these problems, barely mentioning any corrupt actors in government. Instead, he presents socialism as a fix to said problems. Because of course, giving the government more power so they can fix problems mostly caused by them having too much power is a great idea. And of course, he doesn't talk about larger Marxist-Leninist regimes that would compare in size to the US, such as Mao's China or Stalin's Russia. Instead, Instead, he presents an extremely one-sided analysis of Burkina Faso and Bolivia, and ignores the fact that both of these countries were very poor to begin with, and are significantly smaller as well in scale to the US. Therefore, a Sociology 101 fever dream vision of a communist utopia is supposedly necessary to fix America. Other potential solutions are not explored, no explanation is provided for how the socialist utopia could come to America without causing the problems of the past, and a rational person at this point understands that giving the government greater control over the economy and our lives means, of course, course, increased government. So any proposition in this direction must answer to the problem of how do we avoid corruption and other abuses of power that come with the territory of a massive state that socialism and communism would give us. But to the utopian, they only see things in terms of what they want, and they tell themselves that they'll figure out how to resolve the contradictions later. Or here's a broader example. People who just blindly trust the media and stay in echo chambers that repeat the establishment narrative. This too is actually a form of utopian thinking, a fantasy land, where the world can easily be understood by just watching your TV. The truth is, of course, much more complex. The TV doesn't really teach you anything. Every member of the Big Six is heavily invested in US Congress in a two-way street of corruption, and exchanges millions of dollars between each other in investments and in lobbying. The reality is these companies have absolutely no incentive whatsoever to provide an unbiased truth, and every incentive to act as political mouthpieces for the highest bidder. So people who hold such high trust in legacy media are generally living in a dream world. You can just look at the financial relationships between the media and government to clearly see that this trust is horribly misplaced. 
Or how about we go even broader, left-wing racism in general, or the idea that racial discrimination against individuals is okay as long as it's in favor of ethnic diversity instead of against it, aside from just being just as morally questionable for the same reasons that racial supremacy is morally questionable, it's based on the utopian belief that diversity magically makes everything better and everyone is somehow going to have an equally valid contribution to all aspects of all forms of business and industry equally. A very nice and starry-eyed politically correct kumbaya story, but also very untrue in a demonstrably mathematically false way. A simple experiment to prove this is to picture two hospitals. Hospital A hires based on merit, and Hospital B hires based on an adherence to 50-50 diversity between red and blue. If we assign competency randomly on a scale of 1 to 10, Hospital A simply takes all the best qualified. However, Hospital B must split their chances between diversity groups. If Hospital B is handed a pool of applicants with less competent reds or blues, on average, they will underperform against Hospital A. For instance, try rolling 12 10-sided die and compare your results where you must have an equal representation between the both sides, and results where you simply choose the four highest roles. Sometimes Hospital B gets lucky, but A is at an obvious advantage. Also, B can at absolute best just tie with A. It's basic statistics. So which hospital would you rather go to for surgery? Exactly. But more importantly, this actually creates unfairness at the individual level. For the reds and blues that applied to Hospital B, what were capable of the job, what was all their hard work for? This is the secondary issue with left-wing racism. It's better to just do things on merit. If diversity happens naturally, then sure, let it. But if it doesn't, trying to force it for some beautiful vision of perfect group equality of outcome doesn't really fix anything, and ironically ends up being just as discriminatory towards individuals as the supremacists are. And now, here's the beauty of it all. All three examples I just gave have nothing to do with Islam or women, at least not in any direct sense. And yet, if you ask anyone who believes in these ideas born from unrelated utopian thinking whether or not Islam is right about women, chances are strangely pretty good that they are going to flip out. Why does this happen? Well, this is just based on my own observations, but for whatever reason, people who are willing to adopt contradictory beliefs into crafting utopian concepts seem to make the same reasoning mistakes in just about all other aspects of their lives. And that is the true problem with utopian thinking. A person unable to cope with ERA isn't just confused about ERA, they are very likely confused about everything. As you dig through the various ideological beliefs of any person who fails this test, you will often find a similar pattern of contradictory components woven into utopian thinking. And this is the real purpose of Islam is Right About Women. It's a filter, a filter to help detect when someone may hold beliefs that don't actually make any sense. This is important because in today's day age, many of these people have vastly improved their optics game over the last four years. They still believe in the same self-contradictory nonsense, and these people still care more about political correctness than factual correctness. They have just gotten better at hiding it and being less cringe about it. That's it. But when put up to the tests of reason like this, they still fail just as hard as they always did. And the better we all get at detecting these contradictory thinking, the better off society will be. Because nothing is more effective at preventing a better world than people who waste everyone's time by claiming to fight for a utopia that doesn't make sense and can never come to be. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe.